Hi, everybody, and welcome to Watch Time Live, and welcome to our last panel of the weekend. We really appreciated having everybody join us for our first inception of Watch Time Live. This has been such a crazy year, so we're just thrilled that we were able to put something together for the watch brands and the watch collectors because there's not been many opportunities to gather in person. So I think this is second best and I think it went really well and we appreciate the support. Um, before I introduce our moderator for today's panel with Eberhard, I'd like to let you know that we would love to have your questions at the end of the seminar. So if you can utilize the Q&A button at the bottom, please send us your questions. And also, if you want to chat throughout the seminar, please put it to panels and attendees so that we can all hear you or see or read your questions, not hear them. Um, and that would be great. And um, I'm Sarah Orlando. I'm the publisher of Watch Time. And again, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Mark Bernardo, who is our senior editor. Take it away, Mark. Thank you very much, Sarah. Welcome, everybody. Um, today, uh, uh, we're going to wrap up our inaugural Watch Time Live event with, uh, we're going to learn about a brand that, uh, a great old historical uh, important Swiss brand that nevertheless you may not know much about, but you really should learn. And fortunately, we have from Eberhard, uh, the general manager, uh, Mario Pesarico. And I will start off hello, by Mario. asking, hello, Mario, how are you? Good, thanks, you? <laughs> oh, we're doing great here. I see you're um, in La Chaux-de-Fonds. I am virtually in La Chaux-de-Fonds. <laughs> this, by the way, is the ancestral headquarters of Everhard and Company, which I believe uh, has recently been refurbished, correct? Absolutely, we went finally back to La Chaux-de-Fonds in, in 2018. Uh, 50 years uh, after we, we had left La Chaux-de-Fonds and we had finally the chance to go back there to the, to the original building, to the historical building that is part to, of the UNESCO heritage of the city. And uh, but this is part of a presentation. On, right. We're going to learn all gonna, about this fascinating yeah. history here. First, can you tell us what you're wearing today uh, on your wrist? Uh, on my wrist today, I have a Vanderbilt cap naked. So the, the naked version of the Vanderbilt cap. All right. Watch that has been dedicated to the victory of Nuvolari in 1936 in Long Island in the U.S. So it was uh, dedicated to the, our American listeners. Right. Now, I know this is a cool looking watch. I think our, our friends want to see it. Can we see it? Yeah, I will <laughs> take it off the wrist. Yeah. Very cool. And we're going to learn more about Nuvolari as yeah, well. Absolutely. So Mario, I'm gonna let you uh, start presenting and uh, we'll have some questions afterwards and uh, our, our audience here will have some questions of their own. So uh, you can take it away. Okay, thanks. So I'm happy to, to, to be part of this important event that is an alternative of this chaotic year that really is, uh, uh, how to say, changing our life anyway. Oh, Eberhard is a company that has been uh, has been founded in 1887. So we are currently in the 133rd year of our history. Um, just a second, we have to change the page. Michael. It was uh, control L to go full screen. Sorry. So uh, founded in 1887, 133 years, founded in, in Lachot by Mr. Eber. Uh, the company belonged to the Eber family for uh, almost 80 years, more than 80 years, 82 until 1969. Uh, through three generations. And then in 1969 was sold to the Monty family. The Monty family is currently uh, uh, managing the company. So uh, the company belonged to two families and, and five generations through uh, 133 years. Um, obviously, always independent. Uh, that was uh, the desire of Mr. Eber, the, the foundation of the company. And this is still what we, we are doing. 
keeping uh, and, and preserving this, uh, this uh, value, uh, obviously in a very challenging market. So today, uh, most of you will know that, uh, that most of our competitors in our price positioning are uh, often part of, of, uh, of uh, big groups. And this makes our life more and more challenging and, this, and, and, and we are happy of this. So since the beginning, we, we, we jump, I will, I will make some jumps because otherwise it would be too long for the time we have. Uh, in, in 1919, we started with the first chronographs. Here you see the first uh, mono, mono pusher um, chronograph in, that originally you can see how was made from a, from a pocket watch and it was, was made uh, to become a wrist watch. Through the years in, in, the, in, the, in the 20s and 30s, the chronograph became the DNA of the company. Um, he, here you see on one side the wrist chronograph that is a Magini um, special edition, and the big one is the, the pocket watch dedicated to Magini. It is important because you see today how the company is gaining value in the auctions. Um, the, the, the one with the, the pocket watch was sold for 60,000 euros a few years ago, and lately. At the end of 2019, the wristwatch was sold 425,000 euros. So if the company from one side keep very strongly the roots and the heritage of, a, of a historical brand, from the other side, and you will see it with the, with the more recent novelties that we have in the last 20, 30 years, we have been trying to develop uh, uh, the, the technical developments and the aesthetical developments of the brand. Um, one, one of the milestone of the brand is the extra fort. Extra fort was made on, on the roots of the chronographs of the 20s and 30s and became the, our most important collection uh, through the last uh, 80, 80 years. Uh, even today in the auctions, the extra fort are, are a big part of our of the sales of the brand. And as I said, uh, we are taking the roots from the past in the present, and in 1999, we restarted the extra four, with the Extra Four collection. So after again, after 21 years, Extra Four makes uh, makes uh, is a big part of our of our collection today. We have four or five main collections, and for sure, Extra Four is one of them. Uh, another important collection is uh, the following: that is the the scapograph. So the scapograph was one of the, of the first diving watch uh, at the end of the 50s. Um, today we have probably 500 brands in the Swiss uh, industry. At that, at that time, there were very few and we were among them. Uh, I must say our history is absolutely uninterrupted. So neither the first, neither the second world war interrupted the, the, the activity, neither the recent COVID <laughs> Just to mention the last, uh, the last huge problem we had uh, affected the, the obliged to close the company. So we've always been on the market. And uh, as we did, very few other brands did. In the 50s, we came out with the first uh, diving watches. You see the, uh, the, the original in the, in the back of the, of the picture, of the image. Um, and uh, in 2016, we reproposed this watch. Who won the Grand Prix de la Rogerie in Geneva in 2016? Won it with a, with, with a price that is uh, less than $3,000 when the average price of the, of the prized watches at that time in 2016 was 80,000 Swiss francs. So uh, almost $80,000. Um, a, a, a big honor for, for, for us and for the watch we presented. The first, the third important um, a milestone is the contograph, that is also another important chronograph of the 60s. Uh, you can see from the stamp used, we used for the communication uh, uh, how we tried to keep on one side the original um, image of, um, uh, of, of the brand, of a, of a product, but modifying, modernizing, and using modern materials as we did in 2014 when it came out. And then 
uh, we arrive, uh, we jump over the 70s, that is, uh, it was a nightmare for the Swiss industry with the, with the Japanese uh, the, taking the market and the electronic and the ports, modifying completely the market, but nevertheless remained on the market but obviously with, with an adjusted, adjusted collection. Then the market restarted at the beginning of the 80s. And at the beginning of the 90s, I must say, started what is ever today. So from now on, you will see the, the, the main pillars of our uh, current assortment. And the first one is the Nuvolari. That is the, the first important, uh, not the first, but one of the, of the uh, links we had with uh, with cars and we had with Alfa Romeo and we had obviously with Novolari that was the greatest pilot of the history uh, for for many. So the Novolari collection started in '92 and then in uh, you see more recently the limited editions dedicated to, to Novolari, uh, the Portfolio Verde on the back last year 2050 pieces and the 110th anniversary watch. Uh, the, the front one in white, but we will see something more in the next in the next slides. Uh, obviously, innovation it's it's a key word for us. So, it's innovation is not only a technical innovation. Innovation is in any detail of a, of a watch, and innovation is, is aesthetical innovation. So, we have always been working on on how to differentiate the brand from from the competitors, and this is our. Uh, main target when we when we think what we want to produce in the future. Um, the second important brick of uh, our current collection is the eight days. In, the, in 96, when we came out with this watch, nobody was had made a, a wristwatch with a long power reserve. So we, we modified a, a Peseur 7001 with, that had originally one barrel. We made two barrels two springs, you see the two springs on the back. One is 25 uh, centimeters long and the other one is 1.25 meters long. Um, uh, a patent of the brand, you see how the barrel bridge is shaped like an eight with the, uh, with the, with the spring all around. Again, uh, the, 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 the uh, really iconic watch of the, of the brand was made in 2001. When Mr. Monti, the father of our current uh, uh, president, Barbara Monti, um, uh, invented this watch. So he thought that in chronography, almost everything had been invented, and he thought he had to do something, something different. And this is what he did. Since then, uh, so almost 20 years, nobody could make uh, something similar unless the, the counterfeiters, because uh, there is a there is a patent on the on the movement, and there is a patent on the design of this watch. Again, uh, uh, we jump again a bit. We go to what is Ebro today. We, uh, as I was saying at the beginning, went back to La Chaux-de-Fonds, went back to the original building, um, and we decided to do this in, in three steps. First thing was to go back to the building. The second one was to make a, a manufacturing movement made in, 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 a, in a different way. And I explain why, because we produce 16,000 watches per year. We cannot produce an, an in-house movement, uh, would be too expensive, would be uh, too long, would be uncertain in terms of, 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 uh, of course, how to say it tolerances, uh, how the, the, the movement would work and be certain that this, this movement would work well in a short time, it's difficult because a, a new movement takes uh, three to five years to be developed. So what we did was to ask what is the best industrial partner today in La Chaux-de-Fonds and in Switzerland, that is Celita, to produce this movement for us. So it was made, it was modified from an automatic movement made hand winding, designed by us with the, with, with the rubies, with screws, with the wheels, uh, designed and, and modified by us, but produced by Celita for us. And, and this was the second step. Um, then the third step was, uh, and this is the, the, the watch that, is, that uses this movement. So we call it 1887. 
to celebrate the foundation of a, of a brand in La Chute de Fonds. Um, and it's very classical with the guilloché tile and with the silk, silk uh, uh, strap to make it even more class. Uh, and then the third um, uh, step was after the return to La Chaux de was the museum. We have now a museum in one wing of a, of a, of a factory where we display all the models that we've been collecting for, for, for many years, for, for 50 years, uh, and they were in our safes and they now see the display in these windows. The museum is open, it's open for, for visitors, it's open for who wants to visit uh, on appointment. And then uh, we arrive to, to the, the videos that we want to show you. Uh, the first one is the video uh, talking about the, the new Scafograph uh, uh, watch, the, the vintage version, and here we have the video. Okay. Do we want to see also the, the next video? So we'll see also video for the Alfa Romeo. So the the vintage uh, um, the vintage scaphograph um, is a, is a, the new version the new dial for the scaphograph that you saw before won the Grand Prix de in 2016 and the the video for the Alfa Romeo is celebrating the the second limited edition of uh, of this watch uh, the 110 that is has just been presented and will be on the market in one month and it's just 110 pieces uh, uh, of production. Right, okay. Do you have more products to show us, Mario, or are we starting our discussion now? Uh, I have a, a couple of more images of other products of, of this year. Great, let's see those. Yeah, okay. So here there is the Traversetolo. So this is also an important watch for us because in 1997, when we first came out, it was the first 43 millimeters watch. So the size at that time was uh, really much smaller, 37, 38, 39 maximum. And this is 43. Since then has been one of our best seller and you see two new versions with the green dial. And uh, uh, Mario, I, I'm very sorry to interrupt, but we don't see the images, are you? Going to share those. Oh. Thank you. You see them? Not yet. Mm. 
You, you see them? Uh, no, not yet. You, you need to click on share screen. Can you tell me the first one that you wanted to share? Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. And then it, yeah. And control L if you wanna, okay. there, thank you. So I'm sorry again, uh, 43 millimeters, hand winding, historical, historical piece because 21 years, uh, 24 years ago was really the first 43 millimeters watch on the market. And the other important watch I wanted to, to, to share today is the new uh, version of the Extra Ford. Um, so we decided to invest on the movement of this watch. And um, uh, now all the, the two counters, the, the, the chronograph, the Extra Ford, the two counters have uh, the uh, column wheel movement. So instead of having, uh, having a cam movement, we made it with the column wheel for really a, a, a small difference in, in price, like a hundred dollars. And this is, has been a, a big investment in, in, on, on the movement because uh, normally the, before this, the difference in price from a camo or a column wheel was around three, 350, 400, $400. So now much, much cheaper and uh, same big, good quality. So I think this was the last, uh, Version, but we go to, to the next images so we can see better the three versions of the scaphograph with the um, rubber, uh, um, leather, or steel bracelet, and the Alfa Romeo with the limited edition and uh, with the 110 uh, on the dial and the logo of Alfa Romeo on the back of the watch. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Sure. Yeah, those are some beautiful pieces. Some nice cars too. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you. Uh, thank you. That was very, very thorough, as I, I knew it would be. Um, and uh, though I still would like to drill down on a few of the important milestones, as I know you and I have talked before about all this, um, about some of the things that Everhard has done in the watch industry that probably should be more well known. The scaphograph, you mentioned the, uh, the GPHG. So people are finally, I think, starting to really notice that piece. But it did, it was a product of the 1950s in that early, that first wave of, of professional dive watches alongside the Submariner and the 50 Fathoms and all these more famous um, timepieces. Um, what should we know about the scaphograph and what, how it developed and what made it special? Uh, scaphograph, when it first came out in 1959, was made uh, with 100 meters waterproof. Then we made several versions, 200, 300, and then in the 70s with the course movement up to 1,000 meters. Uh, when we decided to make it again in 2016, we decided to make the 300 meters. That was the uh, deepest uh, that we had made among the, among the mechanical mechanical watches. So we made it 300, we made it with a ceramic bezel, we made it with a helium veil to make it to make it resistant to that pressure, and we made it with the three dials, you saw one in the image we, we, we showed, the one with the, if I remember correctly, the one with the blue uh, second hand, but we have it with the, with the yellow and with the white. Then the, the following year in 2017, we had the, the GMT version, uh, also with the, with the blue dial. Um, and then the last version is the, the vintage one that we just added, that is really successful. We are really having uh, uh, success in the presentation of this watch. It is true that the uh, trend of these years is to have vintage watches. Uh, we can say that we have been doing this since 1999 when we represented the extra fort. But, uh, but definitely we, it's, it was unexpected to have such a big uh, success with this uh, uh, new dial. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and the price is also very correct because uh, with, this, uh, with the leather strap, we start at uh, 2,800 uh, US dollars. Yeah. 
I was I was real that that I was unaware of the uh, the average price of a GPHG winning watch, and that was pretty amazing to learn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, already already it's quite difficult to win a prize in Geneva, not being in from Geneva because we belong to to the Dura area. So normally the the other brands have uh, their area in, in Geneva, but this was the first uh, challenge, and the second one was the drill. Normally. The, the Grand Prix de la Rogerie prizes uh, watches with, a, with a, an average high price, and we won with a, with something that is really a mid price. Yeah, no, and keeping the prices under control, I know, is also very important to this brand. It is very also, important. Yes, That's for it. us, it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, you also touched on, of course, uh, Nuvolari, and for those who don't know about Tazio Nuvolari and who he was, uh, could you tell us a little bit about him and how? this arrangement uh, or how this um, connection between Everhard and him and his estate uh, led to an entire line of watches. Yeah, Nuvolari is someone who, Mr. Porsche, who, who definitely is, um, is impartial, is someone who really knew what, uh, what, what happened in, in, the, in the races, said was the greatest pilot of the past, of the present and of the future. Obviously, it's difficult to 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 know to be sure of this because uh, you you have many many great pilots in the history of uh, car racing. But in 1930, uh, racing on on gravel, racing on on the highway of that time at 336, as he did in 1935 on the first uh, highway highway that was built in Italy. Um, with the with the narrow uh, tires, with no brakes, almost no brakes, and for sure not in carbon, and 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 dressed like a gentleman and not like a, a, a driver as it happens as it happens today, he was really a great pilot. So we have, we thought it was correct to celebrate him, and in addition there was an important thing that we, um, not we, but the, the museum displays. Um, a, a box that was uh, keeping the, his Eberhard. So he had an Eberhard that was lost, but this box was um, was found. By the shape of the of the watch inside the box, we understood which kind of a pocket watch he had, and we donated this watch to a museum. So the link with the brand in in the 30s was a real link, and uh, and we decided in 1990 that. Uh, he had to be to be remembered in a different way, and uh, since then, uh, it's almost thirty years uh, we have been celebrating him through this collection. Right. Yes, and for and for those who aren't aware, this brand is immensely popular in in the Italian market, uh, which explains quite a bit, right, about the all the Italian names and and connections. Yeah, I mean the uh, the company obviously is Switzerland, but since the beginning, Mr. Everard. Uh, came to Italy as probably the, the, the most important market in, in Europe for him. And obviously at that time it was more difficult to travel abroad. Once you did it, 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 took, it took months to go back. So uh, Italy became the first market for him and has been kept by, by the, 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 the Monti family in the, in the next years as the main market. And it is still today. And, and for sure, Italy is an important market in, in terms of taste, in terms of... Uh, Elegance. So, uh, mm -hmm. till today, ever means uh, Italy means 35, 40 percent of our production. Okay, um, and the Chrono Four, uh, which is a personal favorite, actually. Uh, I've always been curious about um, what was going on. You, 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 you mentioned some of it. What was going on uh, as far as the development of that watch? Obviously, there's a dashboard kind of influence, but technically. Uh, I know you didn't build a movement from the ground up from it, and you had to you had to do something to an existing movement. What were the particular challenges you had to, uh, to meet to create that movement? The challenge is that, as you said, is exactly as you said. There is a base movement that is an eta movement, and then is, there is an additional module thought by us, engineered by us, and all the parts that have been added. Uh, are made by us. So if I remember correctly, there are 53 parts added to the original movement. And as it happened, as it happens with the eight days, um, 
uh, ETA when un, uh, used to, to deliver uh, non-finished movements uh, until more or less 10, 12 years ago. But 12 years ago, they stopped. So the, the movement that ETA is delivering or was delivering were completely finished. So we had to dismantle several parts of this movement, substitute them with our parts, and add all the parts that make that makes this watch different. So it's it's really it's really a patent. It's really a, a, a it took three years to Mr. Monti to develop this watch since from 1999 to 2001 and two when it came out, and uh, and it was a challenge because uh, at the beginning the forces of this movement were too strong, and the, the base movement could not support the strength of the, of the hand going back to zero, for example, in the chronograph. So it had to be adjusted. And this happened in the first uh, one, two years of the, of the present of production of the, of the watch, but then everything was adjusted. And, um, and, and, and since then, it remained the, the most important watch for us. Still today is the watch that makes our the biggest turnover for our brand. Right. No, so it's a patented, uh, a patented in-house made module, which means that you'll never, see, you won't see another watch brand with that four register design. No, absolutely. You can't unless you counterfeit the watch. Uh, and then <laughs> in, in that case, in that case, we see, we saw many right. because uh, we saw several chronographs. We, we seized them in, in several markets in, from Hong Kong, from China, from Turkey. Uh, in Italy, in, in Europe in general, there are several uh, counterfeited chronographs, but it is very difficult to counterfeit the watch that is so complicated to make it work. Right. So, so often we found that the counterfeited watches were not, were not uh, really working in all the functions. Gotcha. Um, I just have one more fairly general question uh, before I turn it over to some, uh, some audience questions. Um, you mentioned the independence. I know that's very important to you, the brand being an independent brand, um, kind of making a name here in the US. Uh, and obviously because you started in 1887, you've been through some rough times, world wars, courts crisis, <laughs> financial now pandemic. Um, what has been, I mean, how would you say has been, the, what would you say has been the approach to, to just uh, getting through all these? But what is important is, uh, it's always to have a family behind. So uh, when the family is totally committed as it was before 1969, when the Weber family was there, and after 1969, when the Monti family uh, arrived and, and where it still is, this is the most important thing. When, when you see that the, the DNA of a brand from, from the, the, the Eberard uh, gentleman, from Mr. Monti and today to Barbara Monti, uh, that is keeping the same DNA, producing chronographs, producing men's watches, producing uh, uh, complications. Uh, this is means that there is a, a real DNA, and uh, and and as I said, also, also today the challenge is that we have to to be in, in the same markets where the brands, most of the brands belong to the groups. Uh, you, you can understand that, that most of the brands belong to the Louis Vuitton groups. Uh, Louis Vuitton Group to the Church Group to, to Richmond Group, and then the, the big the big names like Rolex, Patek, uh, Audemars, uh, and so on. It's 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 tough. It's a challenge. We we have to be in the same shops, in the same A shop, in the same uh, high quality shops, and this means a, a challenge because uh, you have to to invest. You have to propose something new every year, not going out of your price positioning. Uh, and this is also another challenge because producing in Switzerland, uh, it's tough and it's expensive. And if you want to keep your production Swiss as we want to keep it uh, according to the Swiss uh, law, it means you have to be, uh, d d your costs are high. And uh, when you produce 16,000 watches per year, this is even more difficult. But we are totally committed to, to keep this position. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, and who am I turning this over to for uh, to bring up some audience questions? Sarah, is that you? That would be, yeah, that would be me. Uh, Mario, we have just a few questions from the audience. Um, the first one is, 
a question about your win of the GPHG and they wanted to know, has winning a GPHG brought more international attention to Eberhard? For sure. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, no, no, it absolutely. Uh, this was what happened. Uh, I must say that the Chrono 4 already gave the first boost to the brand 20 years ago, but the GPAG increased this boost and reinforced this boost. Um, they, we chose to be on, on, on few markets, not on all the markets, because it would be impossible to be everywhere with our production. With the, with the limited availability of movements that there is on the market, but definitely uh, we are in the main market with the, with, the, with the right price positioning and with the right positioning in the shops. Thank you. Um, and then another one is, um, as a relatively smaller brand in the market, what are the key efforts the brand is making with consumers during this time? I believe the, the key activity, uh, I mean, from one side, obviously, is the quality of the products, is the, the aesthetical aspect, is the, um, is, is, is a presence in, in, in the nice, in the good point of sale with the good communication. But the other relevant point that is really a key for us is the service and the attention to the customer. So, and, and for customer, I mean, both either the, the, the retailer and the end consumer. So it, even if we don't sell to the end consumer directly, um, because we will always want to go through our dealers, the customer can always be in contact with us, can always ask information, can always send the, 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 the watches to be repaired or watches to be estimated. And we have to give, and this is really a key to give a, an immediate response, an immediate answer. Um, and it's obviously the same we have to give to our retailers. To, to, to them, we granted that, that we will never go online directly because uh, uh, they spent decades to, to help us to, to, to make the brand, the brand uh, known. And we will never leave them to go directly online to sell to, to the end customer. So we will always be faithful to our dealers. Thank you. And then how does that, does that pertain also to the US audience? Is it the same strategy for the whole world or is it, do you have a, a specific strategy for Americans? Because I know it's, every market is so different. Obviously the, the American market has, has several different aspects. It's clear that the current situation of pandemic made things a bit a bit more complicated because with uh, our distributor in the U.S. Uh, Bogest, that I always thank for the effort and and uh, and activity they do they do for us, uh, Thierry Chanou and all the team that is working with them, um, uh, we have we had a had a how to say a target of a new point of sales, but this was tough in the last year. So mm -hmm. um, we have some shops, but also we, we uh, through Bogest, we can help the, dealer, the, the, um, the end customer to find the best way to, to, to buy the watch on the, on the, on the market because uh, on, on, on our, through our tools, because obviously for the moment, the pandemic is, is stopping the, the growth in terms of point of sales in the market. Right, right, right. Well, I know you work with a great team. Um, Domenico in the chat had asked about your distribution. So Domenico, um, Everhart works with Bo Guest and uh, specifically Thierry Chenu. And he's, Thierry's now listing some of your, your doors in the US. Um, oh, Thierry. And then <laughs> Thierry's, always, <laughs> Thierry's very helpful. He, he wanted you also to mention the 1887 Remontage Manuel and the dandy strap. Yeah, uh, I, I, I spoke about that before. Uh, oh, you did? Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm don't, don't worry. <laughs> we, no, 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 don't worry. Just wanted to make something really classical with the in-house movement explained uh, as I did with the silk movement, with the silk uh, strap that I didn't describe completely, so I can add something on the strap. We asked the best tie maker in Italy to make uh, uh, two straps for us. 
So one brown strap in silk uh, made for the, um, uh, the dial with gold numbers and one blue silk strap made for the, uh, let's say nickel dial, the, the silver dial. So to make it, to have a, a nice ensemble, uh, I think it's a very, very classical and very elegant watch. And just to clarify, sorry, yeah. the, this is the watch with the, the new base movement that you made in cooperation with Salida. Exactly. Which brings up, I guess, another question uh, that would probably people would want to know uh, is that is this is this base movement going to host new in-house made complications? Yes, this is this was the this is the objective. So we wanted, in fact, to start from uh, and hand winding, so a, a base movement, and, and on this to build the following in-house movement. Uh, as I said, Celita is, in, is a very important industrial partner, the only possible partner of this size, of this quality that can work with the brands. And we work with them in, in this direction. And as you said, uh, Mark, it's very, it's, uh, or the question that came is, is very correct and it's very clever because we wanted to start from this point to build on. And uh, so in, in, depending also on the pandemic, because we want to keep this year, the, the price, the prices of a novelty on a correct price positioning, but we will then grow on this movement and present an automatic, a chronograph and so on. Excellent. Great. Well, I think that's all for our questions. Mark, are you? I think uh, we answered everything. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, proposed. yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mario, so much. It's been a pleasure. Um, for the for the collectors still online, we're gonna have a, a very informal watch time staff hello to everyone if you wanna stay on. Uh, we're gonna sign off with Everhard, but if anyone wants to stay on, we're gonna all chat. And if you guys have any questions for us and whatnot, we're happy to answer it. It's been a pleasure. Uh, we've loved in, engaging with you all the last or how, who knows how many days, four days? Yeah, I think it's four days. Um, it's just, it's been amazing and we're so thrilled and we appreciate the support. So if anyone wants to have a little chat with us, we're all gonna be live. So we look forward to chatting with you and thanks again to Everhard. Thank thanks you, Sara, thank out. you, Mark. Thank, thank you, you. thank you, Mario, thank very you, much. Everyone. Thank you very much, thank you, Minda. And it was, it was a pleasure to talk to, to all your attendants and uh, always a pleasure to, to meet with you. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Thank you.